morning, everyone. Uh, I will try again not to be very dense, but a little bit uh, practical, but without losing, let's say, the basis of the discussion. So this is something that uh, uh, we have been discussing in this construction. So this is, uh, so, uh, so this uh, initiative of this, what I call it, technical recommendation is being part of the innovation community activities. And the idea is that uh, we need to figure out a way that uh, all this work that we are doing and pushing forward in terms of uh, the model of information, it should go also to the industry side, but in a most, uh, as possible, efficient way. So with some brainstorming among uh, our colleagues here in the construction, we can move up with a tech recommendation concept, which is basically what we'd like. Eh? It's not something, uh, it's quite different. It's a very short document, very short. Okay? I put there maximum four pages, and then plus one page, which I call it a request form. Okay? Uh, I think also that uh, the should be a kind of a letter format, okay? So it's not uh, a report, it's not a guideline, it's not a code, it's, it's a kind of a letter. And the writing style should be non-technical, um, mainly from a decision-maker point of view, not use jargon terms, so co very complicated uh, terms. Um, and I put here something similar to a law document. It's not a law, okay, but the idea is that this document should support owners to something further which is ultimately, let's say, have some real benefit on this uh, uh, tool. Um, and uh, in terms of content, uh, we suggested mainly two parts. The first part, which is the technical recommendation, as I said, maximum four pages, where we define very clearly the scope, we define the problem, the methods that will support the problem solving, and then giving evidence of the efficiency and benefit of the methods, mainly supported on the case studies that we are uh, uh, studying here. So as far as I know, it, we have 19 case studies. So perhaps what we could do is this work that uh, Dimitris is work, working on, the guidelines and reports, we will have a very detailed uh, description, outcomes of the different case studies. Perhaps in this document we can then say that if the owner or a concessionary has a structure that it might uh, fit in one of these 19 case studies with high similarities, this document having the cost action behind supports the owners to give evidence to the authorities that perhaps they should uh, think about considering more efficiently the value of SHM that is being provided in that structure. And for that, then, there is a second part that we, su uh, we suggest. It's a kind of a request form, one page, where clearly uh, identify what is, uh, let's say, what the owner is trying to negotiate or asking some uh, awareness to the authorities for this issue. So, uh, but of course, this is a top-level document, it's very short very concise, non-technical, uh, perhaps might be used as an attachment to a, so as the owners, concessionaires, they have some obligations according to their contracts, but perhaps when they deliver reports or the periodical <laughs> inspection reports, whatever, they might decide at a certain point in time that, okay, we have a lot of other type of information, in this case we are mainly focusing on the value of ACGEN, and perhaps we should attach this document, very short. But of course, a very short document is not enough because for pages we cannot synthesize everything. So as a background on this document, we should use the guidelines that are being uh, produced in this construction, as Dimitris was uh, <laughs> referring. Uh, I think also reference to the journal papers that are being produced along this uh, part of the construction, which also gives robustness from a scientific point of view. And of course, also we should explore a little bit what the code tells in this context. If we have some open windows in the code, that perhaps we should also push forward. So I think that as a, in the end of this document, a 
very concise list of reference that if needed to check if they can go further that indeed okay so okay this is repeated sorry about my background so I put here a layout so I've been uh, working with on this with Sebastian so this is a type of layout so it is two pages so it can be two pages four pages maximum so as you can see very clear the scope the problem statement methods what are the recommendations that we suggest if your case that you have in your infrastructure part it has high similarities with one of these 19 case studies that we are working on and something that is important is that uh, we expect that uh, all this community of the construction here signs this document if they agree of course yeah. so this is under discussion inside of the construction which i think will give even more power more strength to this document because it's mainly this community of experts on the area from different countries even from different continents they will support this document which i think brings some consensus and not only a single vision on this problem <laughs> so then is about how you think this document should be written and i may i'm making this question mainly to the decision makers okay on the context as well on this industry innovation day so I put some questions here that uh, I will address to you, so I think uh, this could be discussed then further in the discussion session that we will have later on. So for example, uh, how you see the problem from a decision maker point of view, so in terms, I put here some initial questions, but this is not uh, exhaustive, this list. So for, for example, is the problem in terms of managing limited budget? Do you co consider that the ranking prioritization of structures for maintenance is an issue? Well, I suppose that uh, an owner that has an infrastructure park sometimes needs to decide in a, cert in a certain point in time if they should continue invest in maintenance or replacement, uh, condition versus performance. Other dimensions of the problem should be included in this discussion. For Another question is, what is the main objective from the decision maker point of view? So, what you want as a decision maker? Yeah? Optimize budget utilization. Do you want to have a better ranking of the critical structures for maintenance? All of these questions in the context on how this value of SCGM can contribute to answer these questions. Okay? So, from what you see during these two days, and behind them, if you want to Google it a bit what we are doing further, how this value of ACHM might address these questions or others that you consider that is not here. Okay? Uh, something more, more too, it's how you, decision makers, would suggest, like, prefer seeing this region, uh, the benefit on using SHM based solutions. So repair costs, maintenance costs, lifetime costs, other type of costs. So this is something that we should uh, also shape into the document uh, and also in terms of what is important from the perspective how you think about using the value of SHM should you think about that for your cases it's more about uh, temporary punctual or periodical monitoring or as I presented in the case of the zero bridge which is a case of a permanent and continuous monitoring of course there are different benefits but also depends on the on the case by case situation, and of course something that I think uh, makes all sense, at least my perception, is that although we are presenting specific case studies, this is this bridge, this is this building, this is this roof of a stadium, whatever, from a decision maker point of view that is responsible for the infrastructure part. They are not talking about one bridge or one building or one roof. They are talking about perhaps hundreds of thousands. So this issue of uh, scalability is important because the marginal cost will decrease as you are putting these investments in a wider number of structures. But it's up to the decision makers because they know, or you know better than us, how this should be framed. Should we look at case by case? Or do you think that we are in a stage that we should start thinking about a little bit more? There are specific structures that perhaps 
They are similar, so the conclusions that we get from case number five, this could be extended to 50 bridges that are very similar in our infrastructure park, something like this. Because I think from the cost point of view, it's highly benefit when you think in scalability of the, of the product. And then, <laughs> Something that I think it's also important to, to think and discuss is the, risk, the request form. So what, what I suggest is a one page, okay, something like this. We have first a first level about uh, according to the recommendation of the European Commission about technology readiness level. So it's a matter of how mature is a technology solution to be employed in the real market. We should clearly uh, identify for a specific solution that you are interested <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I'm, um, I think we uh, can also uh, already enact a little bit um, in this perspective. Um, the technology ready to um, is um, I think very important, uh, but um, in the way it, it is uh, written up now, it's uh, also a little confusing because it's the technology, uh, but we uh, don't just talk technology or um, mm -hmm. maybe we talk uh, technology characteristics. Uh, and in this perspective, um, yes, we, we should be aware of uh, that it relates to our uh, concepts concept uh, readiness level in, in this sense. Uh, we, uh, I think it's very important that we have the readiness level, uh, but going beyond technology, this is the message, until we have uh, maybe someone who takes up this uh, readiness levels and uh, puts this uh, in a larger context, uh, not just the technology. Thank you, Swazi. Yes, of course. I'm not talking in the context that I'm presenting about the solution for a sensor a adverse system. No, it's, uh, it's more than that. It's a, a concept which includes uh, an hardware solution plus uh, a process of uh, uh, data processing that gives you the value of the data. So this also, in my perspective, when I say technology readiness level, it can also be extended to the final uh, outcome of this technology that we're employing, which is not limited to collect data from sensors and having a, a list of, uh, uh, let's say, data files with results. No, there is a little bit included in terms of the framework of the volume information, because please not forget that, uh, at least my, my experience and perspective, decision makers will not be happy to have a very powerful hardware system that produces gigabytes of data, and then that's it. Okay? <laughs> when I say witness level, is the final information that you give efficient, okay, uh, to decide, to help them to decide what to do and how accurate this is, uh, solution is. And when I put these levels, is perhaps from these 19 case studies, some of them might be more uh, sharp in the answer, others might be a little bit more uh, depending on the subject, the structure, um, the complexity of the information, of information, but I think it's a very nice starting point when you start reading the request. Is what we are asking? It has some categorized level of information. <coughs> this is something that it's agreed that we be now. Uh, that is something that we, I su we suggest is what is the SHM as its system and relevance in the context of asset management. So what you are using and also align it with one of these 19 case studies as a prototype that you want to extend or you have already experience on it. Then also, if you have already some work on it, if, for example, the Zero Bridge has been operating for uh, 12 years, so could they also include that what is the main findings related to the effective condition performance of the structure based on the volume of this, the value of information that you get from the decision data? Very clear, saying what is the the benefit that you were collected, for example. And then also what is the action that you request from a decision maker point of view? What you are asking to the authorities? Are you asking for redefined maintenance plan schedule in terms of postpone next visual inspection, 
renegotiate uh, the period intervals, uh, what to expect should be extensive or intensive. Uh, and finally, of course, in such very short and top-level document, uh, it should be clear a section where you put supporting documents for this request. For example, if there is a report of the observation of the structure where you give evidence of the value-based AGM, instead of putting all these reports, you put a reference to it, attach it, and then you put the request. If the authorities are happy then to discuss with you and know a little bit more about it, you go deep. So but this is like a, an invitation to the authorities to look it in a more careful way and in a very structured way how to see it. Yes, absolutely. Uh, thank you very much for these explanations. Um, maybe we should, uh, uh, also for my clarity, uh, uh, ask uh, who uh, requests uh, who requests and uh, who is requested? Okay. So as we are saying, this type of recommendation is devoted mainly to decision makers. So I'm mainly focusing on the, uh, uh, the entities that are responsible for managing structures. Might be owners, might be concessionaires, whatever. It might be a consultant company that is giving support, in, but in a legal way. And they want, in the perspective that, well, we are doing a lot of investment, or we have a strategic approach to invest more because we are having this background from this community, it's saying, and we get evidence, then we need to request to who? Well, we have a contract where we sign some conditions, we have some responsibilities, we have some obligations, and I'm talking about, for example, the obligations, you are obliged to maintain the structures, maintain the level of uh, functionality, but you want to change some condition of this term. So you are asking to the authorities with whom you are having a contract for this concession of the infrastructure power or the, uh, who owns the structures by itself. Yeah. Um, well, uh, I'm, I'm trying to uh, understand um, the the request for comes from the uh, owners or concessionaires to uh, request services. Yes. Is this a perspective? Yes. So, okay. Yes. So, for example, in Portugal, the, some infrastructures, the owner, sorry, in Portugal, some infra big infrastructures, the owners, is uh, the Portuguese people, so we pay taxes to maintain them, yes. So, for example, Brisa is a concessionary. They don't own the structure, yeah? They have a contract with the government where they have some obligations and they are responsible for doing this and they need to deliver this, whatever it's, what this aims, in my perspective, this is a case, there are others, is try to change a little bit this paradigm between these contracts, between the owners and concessionaires of civil engineering infrastructure. So this can be uh, of help in the tendering process, or for preparation of a tendering process? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Johan, do you have something to comment on that? Yes, actually I have. Uh, for the one second. Yes. Do you understand me? Yes. Okay. So, so Helga, thank you very much. I, I think this is a, a very good initiative, and I think uh, it's very important also to address uh, the decision makers uh, in rather technical terms. So I would totally support that uh, because I, I think it's very important that the decision makers become aware. Uh, of the possibilities they have uh, when they do their decision making and that they uh, move, move further than uh, the pure exploration of some physical actions uh, they might do in the system uh, towards uh, also the exploration of decisions that are associated uh, with the uh, uh, with more information and the uh, uh, corresponding integration of this information. So I think it could be very good to have uh, a rather non technical 
legal uh, document uh, to inform about these possibilities, uh, but also to formulate in a way uh, that this uh, corresponds to uh, a set of requirements the decision makers they have to fulfill uh, when they make uh, these important decisions for the society uh, in, in terms of infrastructure management. Well, I think that's very good idea. Uh, thank you, Johan, for your comment. Do you have some immediate uh, comment on that, or should I address the word to well, Thank you, um, Jochen. Yeah, I, I think we are in the same uh, tune, let's say. And as I said in the beginning, perhaps not so clearly, but this document, and perhaps now in the discussion that we will have, uh, this is meaning for them, for decision makers. So I'm very happy and uh, looking forward to receive their feedback to help us to set up this document properly from their point of view, which I think is the idea. This is a top level document and better than us, they know how to approach these authorities, what is the issues, having us, the construction as a background with these 19 case studies, which might help strength their approach to the authorities with whom they have responsibilities in terms of the uh, maintenance of the civil engineering infrastructure. Yeah, thank you. Yes, thank you, Helga, for the presentation. And uh, there have been. Uh... I've got nothing. I think. Ah, no, sorry. It's almost, I think. So the next slide is I finished this question is, Does this layout fit the requirements for a request from your point of view as a decision maker? So this is something that we have been uh, working, uh, thinking about, but I think uh, our side is as limited say, experience in this decision-making process, but we are trying, instead of just arriving here, I give you an idea, we are trying also giving you already a concept, a draft, which now we want uh, perhaps that you have your inputs, because it, this is for you, it's not for us, at least my perception, this is for your benefit, it's not for us. This is not to be used for research or to get uh, funding or to get uh, research. research proposals or a journal paper. No, this is for decision makers get the benefit that I suppose they want because they invest in function of the benefits that they get. Yeah. So these 19 case studies that we have in construction, when you look to them, perhaps you may find that oh, we have some structure that fits very well on this case that you are uh, analyzing. And we have some structures very similar. Yeah, let's look to this and let's try to have a better conversation with the authorities by showing it a bit. But you need an approach. You need something that uh, an official document, just to the first step. And then, okay, it's up to you, a discussion with the authorities to move forward, always with the support of his work from the construction. Because at the end of the day, I think this is funded by the European Commission and this should be also as an output feed the real economy. So this is the idea. Uh, okay, uh, thank you very much for your valuable support and interest <coughs> in our construction, mainly the decision makers by who I am addressing. Okay. Thank you very much. So thank you Helder for the presentation and uh, we have seen a first discussion here and uh, there was a positive let's say, feedback for going on uh, in uh, this, let's say, third product, which is a short product, but it is aimed at uh, people, all, uh, owners or asset management, ma managers, I should say. Uh, and I would appreciate your comments here. And uh, maybe, Carlos, we had some discussion in the break. <laughs> which I appreciate it very much. And since you are the person who is addressed or your colleague, so uh, I would maybe if you want to say some words based on our discussion, which was very fruitful. Very short word. Elder, um, in, in my opinion, I believe that the focus, in fact, is not, not really um, on the, our uh, capacity, ability to 
renegotiate contracts or levels of the inspections, the, the periodic inspections. Because in fact, it's not that easy to, in my opinion, to do renegotiate these kind of things. We are talking about level of service, we're talking about um, our uh, duties regarding the inspections and regarding monitoring. All this converge to the needs of repair, to the needs of the, having a, a demonstrated performance. In fact, the key is the performance. Not that important if to control performance we need to go to, to, the, to the bridge each, each two years or each four years. In fact, if you have uh, remote controlling, if you are demonstrating that you are controlling it, and in fact you are controlling your performance and you are delivering the uh, contracted performance, in fact you are complying with the contract. And also, in the end of the day, the interest, as I said yesterday, is how much the, the, the you are paying to maintain your, your uh, structures in the, in the specified levels of quality. And this is in fact the target of the grantor. The grantor, in fact, the concern is, is that the concessionary delivering the infrastructure in the, in the specified levels of quality to, to the clients or not? Because they are effect, effectively they are managing a straight um, a contract with the state. Uh, in fact, one re if you have this kind of thing for all the network, if you can monitor the, all the network, not only bridges, all the, the structures, and in fact you can, I believe that you can be able, and what, what perhaps the state will say to you, uh, okay guys, if you are controlling not by uh, visual inspections each to four years, but you are controlling by continuous uh, censoring, perhaps say, okay, the risk is always uh, at your side. And you should always demonstrate that you are delivering the specified the required quality. And uh, I think that, in fact, the focus is always in the, your ability to anticipate problems. And there you can save money. Not only a question of contracting or no. negotiating contract. Can I just remind uh, a very clear comment? No. I will just I will just say this. I think uh, we need to move forward in a very abstract level from a reactive approach to a proactive approach. And I'm sure that uh, perhaps not so early, but this is the future. Is that the way I envision is that these tools that we are developing might help clearly that. Uh, I'm, when, I, when I say that these uh, costs related with the inspections and uh, is a, is a, is a, is a, is a parcel of the total cost, but I'm sure that if you have a proactive approach, uh, it will be more, much more efficient in these expenses. For example, a very clear example to close. Uh, you have an expansion every five years on a bridge. You went there. In the next winter, there was a severe weather event and there was some flood, whatever. And there was some peer settlements, whatever. So the next inspection might be in four years and a half. If this is only based on the periodic inspections, perhaps when you go there again, the severity of the repair will be much higher than if you have something that... So, but also, this not only, I think, not only in terms of the cost repairs, but also more proactive approach in the follow-up of the structures. Yes. So I don't know. I'm thinking about bridges where it has two thousand, three thousand bridges. Uh, thinking about rescheduling this type of inspections in a more proactive. I'm sure that you may save some money, but more than me, uh, you are in a position to understand. And of course, the repairs, because if you anticipate in an early stage, this is like human body. If you go to the doctor, yeah. This is the main idea. So, yes, yeah. yes. Reactive from proactive. This is main. Cool I have nothing more to say. <laughs> so, um, for me to uh, properly understand, uh, your main uh, comment was in the direction of that we should not, in the first place, change the contract, but work in the existing contract uh, framework. 
on the on the optimization of the uh, or reduction of the risks and costs. Do I understand right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because the important in fact the first uh, the first interest to know what is happening with your structures is you is is the is the structure the manager is the is the owner. The owner is very interested to, to understand what is happening today. So when you are saying that you 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 reach the a renegotiation and then you instead of going to the bridge each uh, two years you are now going each five as you said whatever you can also anticipate that could not be exactly uh, the best approach why because perhaps something is happening now and uh, you are not going there because you are you think that you are saving some money not going in the next year but going in the next four years and something wrong is happening you can replace the inspection of the program scheduled inspections by continuous monitoring that is a good approach because you are at dawn but you are controlling and you are knowing whatever is happening with your and you, you have the ability to anticipate actions and in fact to, 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 to go proactively as you said and in my opinion that's the approach as well even we know that our, our structures the, the, the best you can act and the best you can say now. Okay. Yes. So just for curiosity, I don't want to, so this is, uh, might be sensitive information, it's not my, my intention to know, but um, as you see, if I understood correctly, uh, the authorities, um, the only, not the only, but the main request that they ask me is mainly about warranty, uh, uh, a specific level of functionality and performance. And then it's up to you to decide uh, how you, you warranty this. No, but if there's a control plan. There's a control plan. And in fact, we are obliged to go, for instance, you have you have a shadow and by contract, you, you are obliged to, to observe each breach, let's say each four years, the payment each four years, and, and then we prepare a, a shadow and in fact, we do each year. We um, we have a plan. I'm talking about with not. I don't know if it's four years for the bridges. Depends on the bridge. Depends on the bridge. Depends on the bridge. So there's a level of inspection. In fact, you are programming. If you have a thousand bridges, and if you go to do, to inspect each four years, so you program to inspect 200 to 250 each year. But and oh, but you should demonstrate by a report that you 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 are you have been doing this. And what's the results? Because the important is to report quality. And yes, the, 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 you should you should you should uh, <coughs> classify the condition. You should, you should be um, uh, compliant with the contract. And in fact, it's up to you to say what what if you have problems in the pavement, in the slope, in the, in the bridges. What do you have programmed uh, in terms of investment to? Um, to put the bridges in the right level of compliance, the payments, whatever, in fact. So, but I believe that if, if we can change, say, we are not now going each four years, we are now monitoring in continuous. That, in my opinion, should be, could be quite easily understandable by the grantor. The grantor say, maybe this is better that we go there each four years. Yeah. Maybe you are controlling better your, your bridges. You are you have a better best control. I think that the, the approach, this kind of approach, I believe that the grantor will be sensitive. Okay. Uh, so you yes. see this this uh, frame are in a good direction for what you want or you need as a concession. I'm not saying that it is perfect. Far from yeah. that. But it's. I, I believe that no. all the owners are going in that direction. He's actually opening he wants to open for alternative solutions not only fixed solutions alternative solutions which would be even more beneficial so it should be an opening the very strict uh, solutions and your your document is also going according to me towards that direction so it is not contradictory and the project also is going into that direction so there are some different views and what Carlos said, uh, it is good if you have, let's say, uh, um, through internet, 
uh, online or you are at home and you check 250 bridges or 1,000 bridges, so you, you have a control center and so on, so you are monitoring or you monitor the representative bridges, so there are different solutions, so you know you have a model, as we discussed, a degradation model, and you know that after three, four years, I expect to put some money in 50 of those bridges. Uh, so this is uh, very important for the asset manager to know that after four years, he has to put a lot of money to, let's say, to requalify or to upgrade uh, a number of those bridges. So he can plan, he knows when he, the money is not now, it's after three years or something. So he needs degradation models from universities and so on. He has the designer who helps him to, to measure the right things, to, to have to put the threshold, which is very important. The threshold is something very important. So this is, this is uh, an interesting discussion, I think. So, um, is there uh, maybe somebody else from the audience who would like to add something on that, to put his opinion? Uh, what is the experience from the United States? Do you have some similar Mauricio experience, do you think? the project is in the right direction or if I may give you the word for yeah. I guess I guess the difference is for example let, let's say the case of California all bridges I mean are owned by the state of California and then they clearly understand the benefits of uh, having because there are earthquakes there in addition to you know um, normal SHM systems that are, are, are put on in areas where there are no earthquakes. Anyways, they are the owners, they understand the benefit, they create their own grants for universities, for example, to investigate specific problems, right? And uh, they use whatever instrumentation they have and all the understanding of the performance of the breaches for their uh, long-term plans for maintenance, for um, rehabilitation or repairs or whatever. So it, it's a little bit different from the case I'm listening here, right? But the uh, point is that um, in the case of uh, you, you pointing, the concessionary is bound by a contract. And uh, if I understand right, the use, the benefit of uh, SHM is Help is in the in the sense that you can optimize whatever resources you have, monetary resources you have, to keep up this infrastructure running, and uh, and that. But so how, for example, if you have a contract that let's say it requires you to go every so often to this bridge, how do you just? I mean, I know you have instrumentation, and that's how you justify. But do you do it contractly, or is just at your own, let's say, uh, initiative. initiative? You don't need to get that approval. How how that is happening? Because that's what I can see. What uh, Hegel was putting on that if anyone can start something like that, let's say I am I am a concessionary, right? and I want to take advantage of the benefits of SHM to reduce these visual inspections, and that's a direct benefit. But will the, how you call it, grantor, will approve that? How do you get to that point? Maybe you still need to do that. Maybe you still need to justify. And that is where this framework that you are working here will support that, because you have investigated all of these um, you have come up to a point that you are putting all these pilots just as uh, examples that can be used for that justification, I guess. Thank you, Mauricio, for this uh, comment. So the not only flexibility to do more things, but also initiative is very important. Helga, you have something to say on that? Oh, 
I have a question to the concessionaries, uh, if I can ask. Align it with this thought is how you see, how you see very clear a payback to you by using this. How? What is the payback to you? Yes, so you decide uh, strategically in the, sorry, in the executive board meeting to say, okay, we will have a budget specifically for this and we will move forward strategically on this. We will spend money, of course, investing in an infrastructure. Or what is in the long run the payback? Very clear and sharply, what is the payback? Without vague uh, ideas, if I may ask. <coughs> In my opinion, the payback is always in the more informed, informed decisions. All this converges to decision making. In fact, the best information you have, the best you can decide. So the question, as you know, is, uh, for instance, the, the Lazilia Bridge. We are we uh, we were not um, bound to monitor that bridge. It was volunteer for the reason at the moment. And why? Because you know that is a uh, Big structure, so we decided at the very first moment that, that it will be important in the future to have more information. Then, and as you know, the, all the all the information you need to decide not coming from the, the, the monitoring you have installed. You also need to go there and to inspect the bridge. So this it's, it's, is a balance, yeah. and all this converts to information gathering. You didn't answer my question. Hmm? The payback, the payback is more informed decisions, better decisions, and the best application to your resources. What way? Yeah, so, yeah if, you, if you know when to invest the money, it's also a very good payback, because you know you have to, you have also the certainty or some kind of certainty when you invest your money and so on, so this is also the kind of payback, I think. A million applying a million uh, deployed more, always, always best than a million deployed today. So it's a question of management of the money. Yes. If you are understand what will be happening, and as as lo the longest period you can you can program. In fact, all this discussion starts not to to make a, a reaction plan, mm -hmm. as you know in the past. All the, the, the owners have a, a sort of reaction plan. Mm -hmm. Is the money to be deployed in the next few years? And all the owners now is looking after uh, having uh, deployed um, programs at 5, 10, 20 years. And to have a plan 20 years, you must understand, you must understand the, your degradation laws. You must go deeper on the studies of how can you forecast that you will be intervening in the, in the bridge uh, within 20 years. With your information you are getting in the, in the, in the sensors or the information you are getting in the, in the in visual inspections. Not enough. So the question is, you must get all this information to prepare models, to understand how things is the, the behavior of the bridge, is the behavior of concrete, whatever, and as you know, Every, every single bridge are different from the other. You can have a, a bridge with problems here, and, uh, and 20, met, 20 meters away, you have a, a bridge without problems. So the question is, you must understand the mechanisms, uh, chemical mechanisms, whatever, but the question is to understand what will be the best measure. You know also that, for instance, if you are applying today some palliative measures, maybe that can avoid you to deploy in five years a huge uh, repair. So perhaps you can understand that if you, if you apply palliative measures each five years, perhaps you can postpone the, the, the measure works ten years, and that's mine. Okay, now you work on that. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's a very hot discussion. I have to run all over the room, and probably as a moderator, uh, I think I'm very glad. Probably my personality creates a uh, discussion. <laughs> but you should always keep in mind that the moderator can also stop the session. <laughs>
I have some dictatorial authority. <laughs> <laughs> so you, before you give me Tom, uh, Sebastian this uh, authority, you should be very careful. But I can give you the word. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Wait, uh, when we uh, address the payback, uh, I think the clear message uh, and uh, the source what the cost is after and uh, the cost organization and um, we are uh, requested to uh, to impact, and uh, <coughs> the impact is uh, to create industrial competitiveness. So it is uh, about, uh, well, in the general level, uh, a more efficient management of the bridges specifically, or of the built environment, and this uh, goes. Uh, to uh, the creation of uh, industrial value and industrial impact and yeah, uh, higher revenues, uh, even profits. Uh, and, uh, but it should also go uh, in the perspective of, uh, of society, it should also uh, go to society part by part. So um, maybe this adds some clarity on the question you posed. That are very brief addition to what has been discussed here, uh, because we have seen in Ireland in projects where we have monitored bridges, one is all these monitoring had to be a part of the contractual agreement with the owner. So if the county council owns a bridge, everything has to be a part of this contract, even if it's done on a case-by-case -case basis. And in terms of payback, um, maybe implicitly it was said here, but in some instances, this is related to the insurance aspects that is a part of the bridge, especially when you're repairing the bridge. And there, the payback is sometimes when the common council, the engineer, and the insurance companies are talking together. For a specific project, it can be decided that a structural health monitoring is giving you more information so that the county council can safely claim back the insurance from the insurance company, I'm not going into the details to not like divulge information here, but I think the insurance insurance aspect should be part of it. Yes, thank you. So there is an immediate reaction here. <laughs> thank you very much. Hi. Uh, yes, I think what you said is important, which is sensitive information but the insurance aspect I'm sure that is a big issue for this association because we need to warranty a big infrastructure part of functionality. So I think this is something important. As you are saying Carlos better know better better information, better knowledge, better decision, perhaps low risk, lower risk and therefore lower insurance levels and prevent whatever so it is that all of these are costs, yeah. But as you said, uh, in Ireland, so management are saying that if a concession wants to use it, it needs to be included in the contract. Any structure health monitoring needs to be included in the contract because A, they're contractually obliged to do so, B, some of the monitoring system, B, some of the monitoring will be interpreted as modification to the structure. So by introducing a monitoring system, a modification is being done to the structure. And for that, you have to ensure that contractually you're ensuring that the bridge will not be exposed to risks that are not there. And it just doesn't go in terms of, okay, we're making a hole in the bridge. But who's responsible for the safety on the bridge during the time of implementing the monitoring system. Is it the owner? Is it the engineer? So these kind of things have to be sussed out before you go in. Yes, this is um, an important but of course detail. Uh, who is responsible for the implementation? What is the purpose? Because sometimes you have for research purposes, structural health monitoring, you also have to ask for permission to do that. You have a master thesis for students, you have to ask for permission to the university and so on. So, um, we are merging the session which is lesson learned 
and this is uh, also by you held uh, it's the the next session and also by you Sebastian and uh, maybe by merging these both sessions you would like to, to say something about the lessons learned or we have some conclusion out of this discussion today you have something prepared or I think it's a good idea if you present it now and we have it together with the discussion not extend too much this uh, closing uh, session now. Uh, from my point of view and as a, a promoter of this initiative of industry innovation days, uh, I will basically address knowledge roots and thank you. Okay? So basically I'd like, uh, first of all, uh, although I'm giving, uh, let's say, my head in to show this, this event, but I should acknowledge more people. First of all, Antonio Sosa, which is the uh, executive board member of RISA. It was yesterday here opening the session. Uh, and I'm very happy that he was able to be here. And in fact, uh, he's been a person very sensitive to this issue of the world of information and monitoring strategies. Uh, but also more people from Brisa, uh, they support the organization of this event. So all this supporting that in terms of uh, the renewed uh, coffee breaks, the lunches, whatever, they have them support to do this. Uh, also all people from the Odo, so the staff here is also important for the coffee breaks, lunches. Um, and also a special Welcome to these external guests. So this is a list of people that were happy to join this uh, event. So let's say these are people that are not part of this working group of the cost action. So I would like to acknowledge all your contribution, your discussions. Uh, I'll be very happy to keep this discussion ongoing. So you now meet these people. Uh, you have the contacts, the website, official website. This session will be put available with these lectures that you presented. Look at them again, come back to us, make questions, whatever you feel that you should uh, uh, ask, uh, just take benefit of, uh, of this network. So I would like to acknowledge your presence. And okay, thank you very much for your valuable support and interest in our cost action. And uh, I tried to do as much as possible to put all your feedbacks in a, a very brief document. And I will come back to you. Uh, so these external guest lists, okay? I will circulate later an email, uh, me and Spencer, uh, to give you a little bit more uh, some guides for the future. And also try to keep these contacts uh, for the future between us. Because maybe I keep saying this, we are trying to give you something, uh, but with your support, so it's become more effective in the real world. Okay? So basically, my lessons that I learned during these two days is that we are still far from a real common vocabulary between decision makers and researchers, but we should uh, keep these type of events more frequent and more actively from the decision maker's point of view. So we become more uh, interested, but we researchers should be also more flexible, going out of our zone, comfort zone and try to see their views as we have this short discussion on this proposal of technical recommendation. It was very fulfilled to see that there are some a great zone to understand what they think, what we are proposing. So this is something that Looking forward, we may have a, a next opportunity to meet again and keep this discussion forward. Okay. On my name, on behalf of Risa, on behalf of the English Innovation Days, thank you very much. And now I give the word to Sebastian. Thank you very much for the words, uh, Helen. 
uh, a few thoughts uh, on the lessons learned. Uh, I think they uh, have been also part already of my uh, starting presentation today. Um, I may have a more optimistic perspective uh, in terms of uh, how we progress. And I think this was an important event uh, to build up a common understanding uh, between uh, our researchers, uh, or between us as researchers, uh, between industry, and especially uh, between uh, operators and concessionaries and owners of uh, infrastructure, mainly represented by Brisa uh, here in this um, workshop. So I think we have come quite far and there is a solid basis of mutual understanding. Uh, and this is very important for me. And uh, then I think uh, with this uh, workshop there is a clear road and uh, clear uh, measures of uh, how to proceed. And uh, in the perspective of a citation I uh, used in the first uh, cost action meeting in Copenhagen. It was uh, a quote by Henry Ford, which was uh, coming together as a beginning, staying together as progress, and uh, working together as success. So, uh, in this perspective, I would especially thank uh, Heider, who uh, has been. Uh, I, I think I had it, uh, I said it before. Um, it's been active throughout the action and uh, was the main driver between uh, or towards this event to an um, industry innovation day. We had actually two days, one and a half. So, <clears throat> and uh, of course, the including the uh, organization of uh, this event. Um, And uh, I also would like to acknowledge uh, uh, Jochen, who has been extremely supportive uh, in also in the organization uh, of this event. And <clears throat> I would I would like to uh, to continue and to uh, stay in touch uh, and uh, to work with you together um, because this is success. Thank you very much. event uh, in the background, uh, also Lina, who is outside. Uh, a big uh, thank you for them. <laughs> and uh, of course we need to inform you uh, how we should uh, or how we uh, go on. Uh, we have been to a certain extent ignoring the agenda. Um, this is fine, um, especially for discussions. So uh, the focus of the afternoon is basically uh, that uh, we in the cost action uh, discuss uh, how we can take up the developments and how we plan um, to uh, yeah towards the end of the cost action. Uh, it's it's coming and we need a solid plan uh, and we need to uh, incorporate what we have learned today. So this is the challenges uh, for the afternoon sessions. We have two rooms uh, together. Uh, we have two rooms for that, uh, and I would uh, suggest that uh, there's uh, one group uh, around the uh, case studies. Uh, uh, Jochen will lead this uh, this group, um, 
Then uh, another group uh, around the uh, standardization activities led by Dimitris. And uh, we also uh, can talk about the dissemination, the third group, and then uh, maybe uh, just after uh, a small steering committee meeting. So where we are completely open and uh, we take it um, very, very openly. So if anybody wants to join, uh, to, to listen, to contribute, uh, please, please join us. And uh, but now, uh, let's have the lunch break.